Hello guys and welcome back to the compound. In today's video I'm going to be taking on another dinosaur from the novel Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. So last week we did the Red Rex and the Juvenile Rex but today I'm going to be doing the highly requested Dilophosaurus. Now I'm sure most of you know that the Dilophosaurus that appears in the film looks completely different than the one uh, that's in the novel. So to get an idea of what I'm going to need uh, to do this repaint, I'm going to turn to the chapter in the book where Crichton gives us a brief description of the dino when the JP team are out on the tour. Crichton describes the Dilophosaurus as a 10 foot tall carnivore with a heavy tail, strong hind limbs, and a long neck. And the crests are red and have black stripes like a parrot or a toucan. And its body is covered in yellow and black stripes like a leopard. So with that information, we can get a pretty decent idea of what this dino could look like in toy form. And fortunate for us, there are several very talented artists on the internet who have um, drawn this creature. And so I grabbed a few of these images off of Google for inspiration. Um, I like to uh, oftentimes do that when I'm doing a repaint of a particular dinosaur, just to have some reference material on hand. Now the Dilophosaurus figure I'll be painting for this video is the Amber Collection Dilophosaurus. Now hold on before you go to the comment section and uh, flip your caps lock on and yell at me for repainting this really rare figure. Um, keep in mind that I had already painted this figure a long long time ago back when it first came out and it wasn't rare at that point and it was actually readily available and I was able to get a couple of them so I repainted this one to look like the old Kenner Dilophosaurus and I'm ready for a different deco on it so that's why I'm using this one um, I did not open my sealed one to do this uh, nor would I ever do that uh, this is just how it is and the um, it's already been painted once so we're gonna paint it again the damage has been done but we're gonna roll with it and uh, try and make a really cool novel inspired repaint with it now if you're gonna follow along with me and try this one out for yourself just know that any Dilophosaurus figure will work for this repaint so uh, always remember to have fun and use what you have available to you so to start off, I have first uh, taken some of the figure apart and primed those pieces separately to make painting around the articulation spots easier. Uh, I have also super glued the joints on the knees, ankles, wrists, and elbows into place. Since this is going to be sort of a semi-staction figure uh, display piece and it's no longer really going to be a toy, to be you know messed around and played with or anything like that it'll still work because it's going to have articulation in the shoulders and the hips the tail neck and the head area just the spots that would be really difficult to paint um, i didn't want to have to fool with them so super gluing them into one position is just going to work uh, perfectly for this situation so as you can see i am starting off with yellow and i've got some createx yellow in my airbrush and i'm just applying several thin coats until i build up a really nice bright vibrant base coat and i've said this before you know that painting yellow by hand can be an absolute chore that's why i am not painting this yellow dilophosaurus by hand uh, i highly recommend getting an airbrush for colors like this you know there are some colors that go on really great with a brush and then there's others that are just they're a nightmare to work with and yellow is is one of those colors so an airbrush will definitely save you a ton of time and keep you from pulling your hair out so the next color up is the light green underbelly and for that i'm going to use some fw ink light green and just like the yellow i'm applying thin coats and building up to a nice solid vibrant color on the underside I'm also going to paint the other little parts that are going to be green and then I'm going to seal the bottom part of the neck with some super glue just to help prevent any paint rub when the two pieces are joined together. I'll then take some red Createx paint and paint the crest on top of the head. So I've got the neck plugged back in and now I'm going to start the gauntlet that will be applying all of the black markings. So there's really no easy way to do this. Uh, I can already tell 
Uh, this portion of the repaint is going to be a grind and I'm starting with the neck first that way I can get all those dots done and then I can go back over those dots with some super glue just to lock everything in and, and stop the paint from rubbing off and I'm trying to apply different sized dots and not put them in a you know a pattern or anything like that it's it's sort of like human nature for me to want to just create really uh, straight patterns and stuff for some reason so I'm trying to bounce back and forth from different sides uh, just to try and break up the pattern a little bit so it doesn't look too straight and uniform if that makes sense now with the neck done I can go ahead and pop the closed frill back on and attach the head and continue with the rest of the black patterns so my game plan is to start off with some black stripes looking down the sides and slowly build off of those adding various size dots and splotches and patterns um, really sort of just going with the contours of the sculpt and letting the deco kind of sit where it wants and just sort of you know randomly putting stuff places and just kind of being creative here this particular deco really is just a patience game it's it's kind of staying focused and like focus on one little area and you know put a black dot or put a black pattern and then just sort of build off of that one and then build off the next one and then build off that one and just sort of keep building up until you cover the whole area you know it's really one of those things that you have to just kind of get in there hands on and do it and uh, it just sort of kind of it flows out once you once you get a, a rhythm going and a, and a pattern going in a way you can kind of knock it out relatively quick but it's not super quick this does take a very very long time uh, fortunately for you it is condensed down into a smaller more manageable video so as I got to the base of the tail, I started to transition from the spots and dots to more of a tiger stripe kind of thing on the tail. And um, I was just kind of following the deco and seeing how it wanted to go. And I was kind of vibing off of it and it kind of just seamlessly transitions into these really cool tiger stripes and I really dig it. So it kind of gives him like this really super wild, like poison dart frog kind of vibe. And it looks really awesome. It, it really pops on that uh, yellow and green skin. So I pretty much got all of one side done and I'm finishing up the tail section and then I get to flip it over and do it all over again on the other side. I am a glutton for punishment. I keep choosing these complicated decos that just take forever to do. So um, what I'm going to do is actually knock this out off camera and then when I come back we'll finish off with all the final details and uh, get this thing on the photo booth. So several hours later, it felt like I finally got all the patterns done and he is looking killer. Totally worth all that time sunk into it. Uh, he just looks awesome. So now it is business as usual. I will jump in and paint the mouth with my flesh tone mix, which is scarlet red and beige. And I'm gonna attempt to paint these ridiculously small blunt teeth that he's got and uh, then take a uh, small fine tip brush and a tiny little drop of off-white and hit these small eyeballs of his and try not to make a mess everywhere uh, and then I'll hit his claws with some off-white color and then add a shade wash over the claws just to sort of darken everything up and uh, bring that brightness down a little bit. So the final little details are just minor ones, but I think it does add a little extra pop of color. Not that this guy really needs that, but uh, I think it's gonna make it look really cool. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go in with some yellow paint and just start randomly picking out some of the black dots and adding little tiny yellow dots in the center. Uh, and I'll do this for all the black spots on the yellow and then switch to a green paint for the black spots that are on the green sections. I'll then go in and lock that paint in with a couple of coats of Liquitex Matte Varnish and this Dilophosaurus is finally done. So I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching and I hope you all enjoyed the video and you have been inspired in some way to give the novel Dilophosaurus a shot. I wish you well on your quest when you get to the black patterns. Uh, maybe if you're smart, you'll just uh, keep it really simple and don't go all crazy like I did. But uh, that is completely up to you. Uh, but if you do decide to tackle this repaint, remember to tag me over on Instagram at the Jurassic Park Compound because I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. 
for more Jurassic related content, you know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I'll see you around the compound.